Hello and welcome to tutorial 106. And uh, if you're not in our email list, then please uh, go to markplex.com, M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X.com and join the list. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using the horizontal drawing tool to draw lines at the level of low pivots. The twist in this program, though, is that as the pivots become more and more historic as each bar goes by, the transparency of the line is going to change. So what happens is the more recent pivot lines are a more opaque color like we can see here. And the ones that re relate to a pivot that occurred some time ago become more and more dark, as you can see here, or, or rather more, more and more translucent. I'm also going to be uh, including another program that looks at both low pivots and high pivots. And both this program and that program, I'm going to be giving um, away free to Gold Pass members and uh, others may download them if they wish for a small fee. OK, so let's just go through the program and I'll uh, attempt to explain how I did this thing. Uh, the first thing we do is declare the namespaces. We're going to be using drawing tools. We're also going to be lose, using the uh, vectors. So we need collections. And then we need to create our inputs. The left strength and right strength refer to the pivots. In other words, how many bars to the right or left need to be above that low pivot level. Then we have some trend line attributes the weight and the style we can alter, as well as the color, low color, green. And then this final uh, input, which I've called Axel, this determines how quickly the, the lines fade as each bar goes by. So if we add a, um, include a bigger number there, then they fade away more quickly. So let's um, just ignore the variables for a moment. We're going to be seeing those as we go through the program. And uh, the first thing we do is just uh, once is clear the print log and also create an object of the vector class, which we're calling line vector. The next thing we do is we look for a pivot and we're just using the standard trade station pivot function and when that does not return minus one, then we know we have a pivot. So I said condition one equals this is not equal to minus one. So when there is a pivot just on that bar, condition one becomes true. Otherwise, it is false. And then what we do when condition one is true here, we then add to the vector the bar number of the pivot bar which is equal to bar number minus right strength. And we use dot pushback to add that to the vector. Now, this next little section of the program, I'm just gonna um, ignore for the moment because we're gonna come back to that in just a few seconds. What we're now going to do on the very last bar of the chart, and we're only going to run this once, is assuming the line vector count is greater or equal to one, we're going to go through that line vector from zero to line vector dot count minus one. And uh, in each case, we're going to calculate the bars ago that the pivot occurred. And that is equal to the current bar number minus the line vector for this particular value or as an integer. If the bars go is less than or equal to the int portion of 255 divided by the acceleration or Axel, then we're going to break. Now, the, the uh, explanation behind this is that uh, initially when I was writing the program, I set this up as 255. 255 being the uh, the most opaque um, transparency that you can have. But what I did is included the acceleration so we could just um, accelerate the, 
the uh, the time when uh, bars are faded or in, in fact deleted. Having done that, we then uh, break when we get the first value where the number of bars ago is below a certain amount. And then we effectively go through the vector and delete all those values that are above the, uh, the number of uh, bars that we're going to allow for this program. Having done that, we then go through this uh, modified vector. And uh, in each case, we're going to draw a horizontal line. So we need to create the line at a particular price level. The price is going to be low of that many bars ago. In other words, when the pivot occurred. We're going to change the color and the transparency. The transparency is going to be made equal to 255 minus the acceleration times bars ago. So for example, if acceleration was equal to one and bars ago was 10, then the, tra the transparency would be 245. Still fairly high, but as that bars ago increases, it gets lower and lower and lower. We're going to set the weight and the style. And what we're also going to do is store in the line tag, the line vector value three as type integer. So in other words, for the tag, we're going to store the bar number that the pivot occurred. Then finally, we're going to add the drawing object to the chart like so. And we're going to set run ones to false. So this means that once this uh, initial run through of all the pivots has, has taken place, we, we're not going to do that again. And uh, if we just look at the variables at the top of the chart, you'll see that I've set the uh, run once variable as intrabar persist. Now, the remaining thing we need to do is take account of pivots that form on real time bars and uh, add those to the chart. Also to continually go through all the uh, horizontal lines, or I say pivot, the horizontal line referring to the pivot. What we also need to do is go through all the horizontal lines on the chart and gradually increase their transparency as the number of bars since the pivot occurred increases. So let's first of all look at how we do that. I'm just going to go down to this part of the chart here and or rather a little bit further down. So if it's the last bar on the chart, what we're going to do is use drawing objects dot items object category and in the particular lines we're concerned about, which is horizontal line created by analysis technique. And uh, what that does is creates a vector of the drawing object items. And if the count of that vector is greater than zero, then what we're going to do is um, create uh, a, another vector called line vector. And in it, we're going to store the drawing object items, object category dot uh, horizontal line created by analysis technique. So that's giving us a vector of all the uh, horizontal lines on the chart. What we're going to now do is go through all those lines. So we're going to go from zero to line vector count minus one. And um, we're going to store the, uh, we're going to store in uh, L line. We're going to store the line vector. And then we're going to discover the number of bars ago that the, uh, the pivot for which that line was originally formed occurred. And as you may recall, we stored the bar number in the, um, the tag for that line. We can get that from L line dot tag as type integer. So bars ago is equal to bar number minus L line tag dot tag as type integer. And what we now do is say if the bars ago is greater than, uh, if you recall, I explained this before, uh, int portion 255 divided by Excel, then we're going to delete that particular line. However, if it's less than that value, what we're going to do is adjust the transparency of the line using again 255 minus Excel times bars ago. 
That's one thing we need to do. The other thing is create new lines when they, when new uh, pivots occur. And uh, to do that, we're going to go back up to the uh, the top of the program here. And uh, if it's the last bar on the chart, if run once is false, in other words, we've been through that initial routine of adding all the lines relating to the pivots in that vector that we created, if that is equal to false, and if it is the last tick of the bar, then we're going to create a horizontal line using the price value of the pivot. We're going to set the color, the transparency, the weight, the style, and we're going to add that new uh, bar number to the tag. Then we're going to add that to the chart. Incidentally, also, um, I might just mention if we just look at the program itself under general settings, I've set update value intra bar. Uh, I've uh, unchecked that because there is really no point in the program running tick by tick by tick. So as I said, I'm also for GoldPass members going to include a version of this program that looks for high pivots as well. So if we just, uh, for example, look on a chart here, you can see the white ones are relating to low pivots. And in this case, the orange ones are relating to high pivots. Again, you can uh, alter those colors as you wish. So both programs will be available for free download by Gold Pass members. And for non-Gold Pass members, I will also make them available for download for a small fee. I hope um, I've made this clear. If you do have questions, then please feel free to email me and uh, I will do my best to, uh, to answer. Thank you very much.